I wanted to welcome you all here this morning, the First United Church of Christ on this Memorial Day weekend. As we remember all who have served to support and defend our country and our faith. Also this weekend, though, we have to remember that we're also at that point in the year of the church. We are witnessing Christ's ascension being this past week when the 21st was ascension. And we look to Jesus as he now is being with God and giving the, the, me the message to the disciples, not to go out yet, but to wait. To wait for the helper to come. And then scripture that goes with that comes from the Gospel of Luke. It comes from chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. Then Christ said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sin should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they rejoiced and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel is according to Luke. Gracious God, nor hearts, nor souls, nor minds, make us an acceptable sacrifice unto you, for you are our rock, our redeemer. To them, you know, Christ had presented himself alive. Alive after his passion, after he had nailed to the cross, after they pronounced him dead and he was hastily buried. Three days later, he rose again from the dead. That wasn't all. He continued to present himself to them by many proofs, appearing for 40 days and speaking of the kingdom of God. As I just briefly said earlier, it was actually this, this past week on the 21st that was the, the day he officially recognized his ascension. When Christ ascended to be with the Father, our Father, and in the meantime, blessing Instructing, you know, instructing, encouraging these disciples. All these 40 days from that glorious res resurrection, that first Easter morning. But now as he ascended, he gives them one more command. Those who love and follow him. A final command before they would begin their ministries in preaching the good news of his gospel. But part of that was for now to remain in Jerusalem. To wait. To wait for the helper, he would say. Wait for the helper to arrive. And for those of us in faith who know that helper, we come we know this means. Now the history of Jesus, as we see here, did not end with the cross. It does not end with Easter and his resurrection. Even as we celebrate the ascension this week of our Lord to the realms on high with our, our loving God and Father. So 40 days later after his resurrection. The evidence of Jesus' influence does not end there. However, there we are seeing there is this metamorphosis that's happening. 
how the relationship with Christ and his followers, how Christ's relationship, how God's relationship with us, his people, was changing through Christ. A change from, I would say, more of an immature physical witness to a spiritual, eternal bond, uniting us with Christ and our God. And soon, through that uniting, there would be an empowerment that would give us the capacity, not to just unite with that who created us and is creating, but also in love, being able to connect with each other by God's abiding love in all times and in all places. Now, you know, in the Christian realm, in our, in our societal realm, there's quite an argument about evolution. Some people say we don't believe in that because we're Christians. Others say, you know, they're, they're, they have a different opinion of that. There are those who would believe evolution is not godly. Yet for those of us of intellect, those of us of discernment who have thought this out and struggled with this, we do see how God's hand is evolving. There is an evolution in how our relationship has gone from those early times when we created Adam to where we are now and what's going to be beyond. There's a transition. There is this evolution in the process in how God created us in all creation. There's this ability to see that, that what's created, then the thing is to improve to thrive. Because if you stagnate, then you become extinct. In our human development, we too have this need to grow, and we have grown, and we will continue to grow, to mature as we become more connected to God as His people. From our primitive beliefs, from the old rules, from the law of Moses, when we had to think very concretely because we couldn't rationale for ourselves. Still, God came to us and was encouraging us and brought us to the point where we could understand Him in the life, in the living form of Jesus Christ. God came to us in the form of a man, in the form of His Son. Because he knew we were at that point where we could open our hearts and our minds to affirm godly truths and also in so putting to death the casualty of selfish, sinful nature. Now, of course, part of this is achieved through what Christ in his life, not just the teachings, but his passion. His sacrifice, crucifixion, death, and the glorious resurrection. And now in his history and ministry, 40 days after he rose from the tomb, after that first Easter morning, he now prepares the disciples for a new, another new era. For the followers to go and to come to this point still building upon what was in the past, but also given the, the encouragement to move forward as our Creator was. Where our Creator is not just out there somewhere in our relationship, but also here. Here within us. Here connected with us all. Not just us speaking to God, but also being able to God to speak in us and through us. The help for us to come. Here within us, dwelling with us, uniting us all. And also encouraging this new covenant that Christ gave us through the body and blood. Assuring us salvation. Yes, we are in a process that started with creation that will eventually bring us 
into that eternal glory we know and assert, or we like to call it. Then the goal is that eventually all we know and affirm our Father as the true and living God, who affirm Jesus, who seek salvation first through repentance and then through the body and the blood and forgiveness of sins. This, this has brought us to this place where we have the assurance of eternal life. That is, for those who know the truth of our faith in our hearts. Because we will see the dawn of the new era where pain and suffering and death will be no more. But we must fully know, we must fully embrace ourselves, immerse ourselves in the love that is our Creator. Like I said, it's not out there somewhere anymore. He brought it to us through Jesus. And we're also to share that with each other. So ascension, just as much as birth, as birth, as ministry, as passion, as resurrection. There's significance here. There's importance here because we're moving to the next level. And we should celebrate it. We need to recognize that today is a part of that continuing plan of God and our Lord Jesus to bring all all of them that are, they call their own to a place of eternal joy and of peace. So in witnessing the ascension of our Lord to be in the realms with God now, we are also witnessing the progress, the process that continues. And we'll see next week of course, that will be Pentecost. The helper, the helper that Christ spoke about today is revealed. The Holy Spirit appears. And we'll see how it enables all, all folks who have come to know the truth and felt the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we rise and affirm our faith by using the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and buried. He said, "Come." The third day he was raised from the dead. He said, "Come." And sin upon the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, the next to be judged with the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost. Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of body, life of us. Amen. Amen. Show you our hands for prayer. Gracious God, we thank you that we have the ability to know and discern the truth that is your love for us. The sacrifice that you made for us and the joy of having Christ with us. May we also begin to understand how that connection is even greater than we presume. How it's gonna, His birth is in us and is growing, is mature. As we move closer in faith, more our eyes and our minds will be opened even more that is of your love and your concern for all. Because we know that your love is for all. Grace is God, there are those in this community who need your help and healing. We ask your grace to be upon them. People like Ann Hart, Elizabeth Blystone, Ellen Bellamere, Aaron Anderson, Mindy Edwards, Marie Hirsch, Mary Beth Brown, Jane Alton, Patsy McCormick, Karen Sandler, Kevin Cage, Joyce Thomas, and Kelly Butler. And Grace is God, we also raise these names to you now in our hearts for your help, for your healing. 
Gracious God, as you have asked, keep out of your tent, and God is in your ways. This we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.